This tutorial will teach you how to balance flow, what the influence of variability is, and how to run a multi-level experiment. First, we will analyze the finished model before any line balancing will be done. A summary chart has been added to the frame that contains statistics about all the single procs and assembly stations. A summary chart of the occupancy of the buffers has also been added. Add a worker chart to the frame. Go to File, Manage Class Library, go to the Libraries tab. Scroll down and select Worker Chart. Go to the Tools tab on the toolbox. Add a worker chart to the frame. Double click on the comp milling frame. Drag and drop the worker pool onto the worker chart. The chart will open. Select individuals under Group Workers by. Reset and run the model. Open the assembly and single proc chart. Whilst the model is running, the status of each of the stations are changing. Not a lot of fluctuation takes place because there is little variability in the current model. The two punching single procs are working for less than 20% of the time and the level of blocking is very high. This means the parts cannot move on to the next station because it is full or busy. The milling single proc is blocked for more than 80% of the running time. Utilization of this machine is therefore very low. The comp polishing parallel proc is working for more than 90% of the time. If variability occurs, the machine will not have enough capacity. The rework station is working for only 10%, which is not a problem because rework must be kept as low as possible. The rest of the single procs and assemblies working percentage is low because their processing times are slower than their predecessors. Go to the comp milling frame to investigate why the machine is blocked. The processing time of milling is only 2 minutes. Go to the COM polishing frame. The processing time of polish internal is 5 minutes. And the processing time of the parallel proc is 10 minutes. Therefore, milling can process 2.5 parts for every part processed by the polish internal and five parts for every one processed on the parallel proc. These two stations are therefore the bottlenecks. Open the buffer chart. The painted buffers do not store any parts and the other two buffers occupancy is very high. Open the worker chart. The workers are working 50% of the time, and the other 50% they are walking back to the pickup station. We will now go to the model after line balancing was done and variability was added. Some of the techniques used Identification of bottlenecks, ensuring the bottlenecks are never starved, balancing flow and not capacity. Reset and run the model. Open the assembly and single proc chart. The overall utilization of the stations are higher. All stations have failures and less blocking occurs. One of the punching single proc was removed. The remaining punching single proc works for a larger percentage of time. An extra machine was added to milling. Comp polishing uses three machines with working percentage of more than 
the preceding machines are now blocked less. Two of the three painting machines were removed because they were not being utilized efficiently. One machine has enough capacity. The chart has taken longer to stabilize because of the variability introduced into the system. Open the buffer chart. The chart shows the occupancy of the three remaining buffers. We would like to know whether the capacity of each of the buffers must be to maximize throughput. An experiment will now be run in attempt to see what the influence will be on the throughput with different buffer capacities. Set the end time of the model as 5 days. It is very important to set an end time otherwise your experiment will run on a continuous loop. Add an experiment manager to the frame from a tools tab on the toolbox. Double click on the experiment manager. Select the Fine Output Values. Drag and drop the drain onto the first row in the first column. Double click on the block. Add dot stat num in to the text. Enter throughput into the description. Check the box for use input values. Select define input variables. Drag and drop the buffer in the comp milling frame onto the first row of the first column. Double click on the block and add dot capacity. In the description enter milling buffer capacity. Drag and drop the buffer in the comp polishing frame onto the first row of the first column. Double click on the block and add dot capacity. In the description column, enter polishing buffer capacity. Drag and drop the buffer in comp painting frame onto the first row of the first column. Double click on the block and add dot capacity. In the description column, enter painting buffer capacity. In the experiment manager, go to tools. Multi-level experimental design. 
In the upper level row of each column, enter 25. In the increment row of each column, enter 5. Select Yes. A table will open which will show the values of the buffers for each experiment. Check the box for Use Distributed Simulation. Apply Changes. Reset and run the experiment. The experiment will take approximately 2 minutes to complete. When the experiment has been completed, the report will open automatically. The overview section of the report will show what the results of each experiment was. Browse through the rest of the options. The distributed simulation section will show on which core the experiment was run. The visualization section shows the results of all the experiments. The results can also be exported to Excel.